everyone! Welcome! We are going to learn how to use the drawing workspace in Fusion 360. This is used to generate good engineering diagrams, technical drawings, uh, orthographic projections, orthographic drawings, so that you can get a great precise drawing of your product that you've made and the parts that you need to build and you can give that to other people, to machinists, so that they can produce your parts and convert them into reality. So what we'll do is we'll open up an example project to work on. You can click on the data panel button here and then go to, hmm, which one will we do? We will do basic training and then number 11, which is simulation. Because there's an example in here that I like because it's pretty simple. It's called connecting rod assembly. So we will double click on this to open it. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward part from the orbit tool. Look around. It has, uh, it's an assembly of three components. One, two, three. And uh, let's, let's make a drawing of it, a technical drawing. You'll note that I've got a padlock here. It's read only because it's the example. So I'll need to make my own copy. I can click on file and then save as. So go ahead and do that, give it a name. I'll just give it the same name, connecting rod assembly and click save. Now it is open, so I'll close this. I've got my own version. I don't have that padlock anymore. So it's not read only, I can make changes. Let's make this into a drawing. What we will do is we will go design and then these are the different workspaces that we have. Let's go to the drawing workspace and we'll make a drawing from this design. There is an option for an automatic drawing, which is really cool, but it just puts stuff everywhere, puts dimensions all over the diagram. Uh, and it can be pretty confusing. So I think it's actually easier to go manual. The default settings are all fine. So we will click OK. After a little second, you will be able to place your part. The scale that it's currently using is a scale of one to two. So this is an A3 sheet of paper. And this is, if you printed it out, it'd be half as big as the real thing. It's pretty small. I think we can afford to make this one a bit bigger. Let's make it actual size, a scale of one to one. Nice, good. I think that is a good size because I can click on here to get one of them. That is the front view and go OK. And I can click on base view to get another base view. That's this one here. You can also click on create with the arrow to get a list of all the different kinds of drawings that you can put in, different kinds of views. Let's do another base view. Again, scale of one to one to one. And let's do this one from the top. There we go. And I'll line it up so it's about in the same position. Uh, orthographic drawings usually are exactly lined up. But for this one, I'm not so worried about that. That is good. I will also get one that is, again, scale of one to one. That's from the side, from the right. And I'll put that over here. And go OK. And finally, just so I can understand how these parts all fit together, uh, and what it actually looks like, let's do another base view that is a 3D view. I can click on orientation and get an isometric view. Um, for this one, the northeast isometric view looks good. You can see that the other ones are the same thing, but just from a different angle. From underneath, for example. I think northeast gives a pretty clear view here. And again, I'll make the scale one to one, just so that we can actually see what it is. You make it as big as possible while still being able to fit it on the page with room for all of your uh, dimensions and other annotations. All right, good. So we've got the uh, top view, the right view, and the front view. Let's start adding some dimensions so that a machinist, someone else, can take this and actually build it. Before I do, what I might do is, I've actually got three parts here. I've got that connecting rod, and also these two rods, these two pins. If I expand this, I can hide those pins on this one, and I'll expand this one and hide the pins on the other one. I'll expand this one and hide the pins and expand this one and hide the pins. There we go. So now I can give the exact specifications just for this particular part that needs to be manufactured. Hmm. 
Well, let's start with the top view, which is this one. I want to uh, put a dimension between the centre of this hole and the centre of that one, so that whoever is making it knows how far apart these holes are. To do that, I can click on centre mark, and then click on the hole. Click on one there, click on one there, and now I can press enter to confirm, or escape to get out of that tool. Escape will get me out of that tool. And now I can add a dimension between these two points, the centre of that one and the centre of that one. To do that, I can click this button up here, which is dimension. Again, you can click on dimensions with the arrow to see all the different tools that you have available. If you hover your mouse over one, you'll get a description of it. It tells you how to get help as well. It says can press control slash. I will click on dimension, which also is the shortcut letter D. So you can just press the letter D if that's easier for you. And I'm going to put a dimension from the center of this one. Notice I've got that green cross to the center of this circle. There it goes green and lift that up. So that is the dimension of how far apart these two circles are. Good. What else could we do? Well, we could, uh, well, we need to know the dimension of this circle and this one too, and this one, and this one too. We could label that down here or up here. I might label the inside here. So I can click on this inside circle and choose where or how I want to display it. And I'll do the same for this one. Click, and then, hmm, maybe this one's a bit harder because it's so small. Click, there we go. And then I could do the outside as well. I might do the outside on this bottom one just because I think that will be easier to see. When you're making a diagram, the main thing is to making it uh, so that you can communicate what your design intent is, communicate what it needs to look like. So, we could do, oh, if I zoom in on this one, the diameter by clicking on this circle down here and this one down here. Whether we did it in this view or in that view is personal preference, which one you think will be clearer for your design. I thought it would be clearer to put that diameter here because that one is already an inner diameter there. You could very well click on that outside one. Uh, if you go diameter dimension and click on that outside one, and make one, that would be fine too. Escape will get me out of that tool. Good, so we're starting to get some good dimensions on how big things are. Let's focus on this one now. So this one, what will be important is the whole width of this thing, um, the overall distance. So let's go a dimension from this point here to this point there so we know how wide this whole thing is. If I click on that, Notice that it's gone green. Actually, I'll do that again. I'll press escape. Dimension. Notice that goes green. I'm selecting that point, that vertex. And then over here, it goes green again. There we go, selecting that vertex. So you notice that this line is on an angle. I'm measuring the length between these points. But I actually want their horizontal distance. If you move the mouse around, you can choose to measure the vertical distance, the length between the points in a straight line, or the horizontal distance. In my case, I want the horizontal distance. Good, so now I've got uh, the diameter there dimensioned. This diameter is dimensioned. The overall length is dimensioned. Uh, what else will I need? I will probably need the height of this as well. And this one as well. Hmm. I think that is probably sufficient. Uh, just for completeness, even though these dimensions are the same, I will also do maybe, let's have a look. Do I need this one? Well, that's the same as that. Probably not, probably not, that's fine. All right, good. Uh, to fully dimension this hole in here, I could do, let's say the radius of that circle I mark that there, and the radius of that circle, and I mark that out there, and then the distance between the circles. Well, I can't currently, oh, can I? Yes, I can click on that one, it goes green. And then I can click on, will this one go green? Oh, it's not going green. I'll press escape, and I'll add a center. That way I can do a dimension. I'll add a center of that circle, and a center of that circle, and now I'll do a dimension from this point to this point. There we go. 
As you can see, the dimensions here are really strange numbers, aren't they? 28.58, 4.76, and the reason is this original model was in inches. 25.4 millimeters is one inch. In your designs, you may wish to, for your own sanity, use whole number of millimeters, just so it's easier for you to design and easier to uh, express the size of these things. Uh, you can also, down here, put uh, who made it and the name of the design, which sometimes is the default is good, but sometimes you want it to be um, specific for the thing that you've made. Sometimes you'll need to change that. I think I do need to change the department. If you double click on it, you can choose things to change. If I click on department, I can put robotics because that is the subject. The name, I'm happy with the name. Um, it's not really an assembly. An assembly means more than one part, more than one component. I will call this uh, connecting rod hmm, joiner. Maybe that's a good name for it. Good. And there we have a drawing. You can also make new drawings in the same way, um, which is good to show all the different parts. But I think that one is for another time. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, and I look forward to seeing your fully dimensioned drawings. Bye everyone!